Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us start this lecture with a thought process from Johan Rockström. He says emissions of greenhouse gases warm the planet, altering the carbon and water cycles. A warmer ocean stores more heat, providing more fuel for hurricanes. A warmer atmosphere holds more water, bringing dangerous deluge. Rising sea level threaten the coastal zones. And some of these things we are experiencing nowadays. And uh, let us recall that what we learned in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we discussed about how to take care of expressing the emission level at different oxygen level uh, as per the standard, even though you are measuring at different oxygen level. And uh, beside this, uh, you can also. Uh, express the emission level in terms of emission index, which is independent of oxygen level. Today, we will be looking at how to control the emission from the combustion system. The best way of reducing emission is to avoid using excess fuel consumption. And that we to do, there is no other way out. Of course, uh, when you uh, want to do that, you will have to create a public awareness uh, such that they would not uh, use the burning of fuels in unnecessary manner, the way people do for their own enjoyment and self aggrandizement. And eco friendly combustion systems should be designed and developed such that it will emit less amount of emission from those systems. And that is the things where uh, the fundamental of combustion plays a very important role. And beside this, the cost effective methods have to be devised to treat the combustion product before allowing them to atmosphere. Uh, that is, uh, by this way, we can really help in uh, polluting the atmosphere to a larger extent. And uh, if you look at uh, when you talk about the emission control methods, we are basically talking about COX emission control and particulate control and also the NOx emission control and uh, the SOx emission control. So, these are the four limbs of emission control uh, so far the combustion system is concerned. And uh, COx emission control, if you look at like uh, a question arises under what circumstances the methane, uh, the carbon monoxide CO is formed. CO is formed where the fuel air mixture is burnt either the under reach or the lean condition. Of course, if it is a uh, reach condition, uh, one can expect CO, but under the lean condition, uh, question arises how it is formed. The CO is formed due to dissociation of carbon dioxide, particularly at high temperature. And uh, then question arises why CO is formed under the fuel rich condition? Because of that, the oxygen will be deficient and uh, therefore, uh, the carbon monoxide will be formed along with the carbon dioxide as the carbon uh, monoxide is not really uh, converted into car carbon dioxide. And what are the ways to reduce carbon monoxide emission? There are two ways one can think of. One is recirculation of flue gases such that the carbon monoxide at the exit of the combustion product again will be reused uh, such that the carbon monoxide is converted to carbon dioxide. Another way is to capture the carbon 
monoxide from the product gases using the membrane technology. How can we manage to uh, control the CO2 emission by carbon dioxide capture and storage technologies? And uh, what are the options available for carbon dioxide storage? One is of course, the storage in oceans and other is storage in geological reservoirs like your uh, coal reservoirs, we are having coal mines, the oil mines, oil reservoirs and also gas reservoirs. So, those uh, places uh, can be used. Storage in ocean may not be feasible in recent time, particularly due to the non-availability of appropriate technology. However, the geological reservoirs are promising option for carbon dioxide storage, carbon monoxide storage carbon dioxide storage because of fact that uh, the technology is available and also the spaces like your uh, mines uh, reservoirs which are already being used and it is uh, empty and uh, particularly for the coal uh, and also the for oil uh, reservoirs which are already being used by the people and those spaces can be used to store the carbon dioxide, but however, there will be leakage problem and one has to look at. Now, let us look at how we can uh, really capture the carbon dioxide and uh, there are several ways, but we are now uh, going to see uh, how to do that uh, particularly in the coal based power plant. And this is the schematic which is being shown and this is a combined power cycle, one is the gas turbine top of a cycle is there, there is a steam turbine, this is a steam turbine and uh, in this gas what is being uh, is that in the heat recovery steam generators uh, in from which you can get the exhaust gas CO2 and uh, N2, O2 and water and this gas has to be pre-cooled around 40 degree Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. One can capture this carbon dioxide is basically using the monoethanol amines and uh, this uh, plant is having the three uh, parts. One is absorber, this is basically amine absorber and other is regenerator or amine stripper you can say and there is the exchanger. And once this uh, as I told earlier the pre-cooled uh, exhaust gas will be passing through this uh, amine carbon dioxide will be absorbed and uh, with the uh, due to the presence of monoethanol amines and which are captures around 90 percent of carbon dioxide in the exhaust gas and this uh, carbon dioxide rich amine will be passing through this uh, uh, this chamber going into the amine steepers where the steam is being used uh, at a 120 degrees Celsius as that uh, this uh, amine will be separated out from the carbon dioxide and it can goes back to the again uh, heated and put into the amine absorber so that you will be uh, using less amount of recycling will be occurring here. And then uh, the exhaust gas is cooled. Uh, in a uh, condenser to 40 to 45 degree and fed to the absorption power, uh, absorption tower uh, uh, or and also the it can be carbon dioxide can be removed from here such so that carbon dioxide will compress and can be used. And this plant captures around 1 million carbon dioxide ton per hour and which is a quite a huge. And this is uh, of course, uh, is one of them, but there are several ways of doing the similar thing and that has been developed by various companies. And let us now look at the SOx emission and its control. Sulphur is relatively inert and harmless to the human beings. However, the oxides of sulphur pose serious environment problems as it is corrosive in nature and uh, organic fuels such as coal, oil and wood contains certain amount of sulphur. Fortunately, Indian coal is not having uh, large amount of sulphur, 
and uh, but however, the Chinese coals are having large amount of sulphur uh, by which we may be affected and uh, sulphur monoxide is highly reactive radical uh, as its lifetime is uh, few milliseconds and under fuel rich condition in addition to sulphur oxide, the hydrogen sulphide, carbonyl sulphide, elemental sulphur are also formed and this also has to be uh, removed uh, from the gas before it is letting out uh, to the atmosphere. And understanding mechanism of sulphur oxide has not yet evolved to a maturity level. However, we need to look at uh, various ways of controlling sulphur oxides from the combustion system. There are three uh, ways of doing that, one is pre-combustion and other is the combustion modification and other is the third is the post combustion. And these three methods are not only for the SOx emission and its control, but it can be valid for NOx emission control, COx emission control, any control method as a matter of fact. So, uh, let us look at uh, the pre combustion method hydro sulphurization is one of them, other is the gasification, both of them we will look at briefly. This is one of the effective method of desulphurizing coal and oil fuels and this method treats fuel in presence of hydrogen at high pressure and temperature. Now, let us look at a schematic of a typical uh, hydro sulphurization method in which uh, the finely grounded coal is mixed with anthracene oil to produce a slurry and this is your slurry tank and uh, where the coal uh, is mixed with finely grounded coal is mixed with anthracene oil and this slurry is uh, heated along with the hydrogen gas which is passing through this at a high temperature and pressure and such that and then this slurry uh, along with hydrogen will be passing through the pressure filter where the as sulphur and residue will be separated out separated out and then this gas will go to the flask evaporator and uh, basically it will be passed through the distillation where the light oil will be going out but uh, this uh, anthracene oil will be going back again to the slurry tank and the low sulphur coal can be really separated out of this uh, unit such so that it can be reused also. So, by this one can then flask uh, evaporator is used to uh, as I told flask evaporator is used to convert the dissolved coal to the low sulphur coal. And this is a uh, method which is being used for uh, hydro uh, for separating the sulphur from the coal itself before being used in the power plant. Another method is gasification method, sulphur dioxide emission due to the burning of coal and fuel can be minimized by gasifying them before really use that gas and of course, in, uh, nowadays uh, it is being popular because a lot of emission can be reduced, uh, particularly the constituents uh, which causes the uh, emission uh, uh, during the combustion. So, during gasification coal undergoes partial oxidation resulting CO and hydrogen and gaseous fuel is easy to handle and that is why nowadays integrated uh, gasification uh, plant is being popular and being developed across the globe. Sometimes uh, the methane, carbon dioxide and other gases can also be produced during the gasification of coal. In this case, sulphur content gets converted into hydrogen sulphide, which can be removed by adsorption uh, or the absorption method. And uh, if you look at uh, this CH 0 0.5 is basically simplified empirical formula for coal. 4 moles of coal is reacting with sulphur, is getting into 4 carbon plus hydrogen sulphide. And in absorption method, gases are scrubbed with alkaline reagents such as sodium carbonate or ethyl amine, such that the hydrogen sulfide and other constituent can be removed easily. Subsequently, the elemental sulfur is uh, produced, and uh, in adsorption method, ferric oxide is used to adsorb the hydrogen sulfide 
using the fluidized bed uh, which is operated around 400 degree Celsius. So, let us now look at the combustion modification method. Generally, the finely grounded limestones uh, is injected along with the coal into the combustion chamber and uh, at combustion zone, the calcium carbonate is decomposed into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide and during the combustion process, the calcium oxide is reacting with the sulfur dioxide uh, forming the product of cal calcium sulfide and uh, of course, this occurs at a higher temperature and this uh, also uh, calcium oxide can be reacting with sulfur dioxide in the presence of oxygen uh, forming the calcium sulfate. So, generally the reaction 3 is favor at uh, bed temperature around 1000 degree Celsius, whereas the reaction 2 is favored at around 1300 degree Celsius. However, calcium sulfate becomes unstable beyond 1200 degree Celsius and uh, of course, uh, keep in mind that uh, the combustion temperature during the uh, of coal uh, will be the bed temperature of uh, the coal combustion will be around 1500 degree Celsius. Therefore, uh, nowadays people are preferring the fluidized bed combustor uh, to separate the sulf particularly for sulf uh, coal with sulfur uh, as it can operate at a lower bed temperature which is effective for removal of sulfur. And these solid products are removed along with fly ash using either wet or dry scrubbing method which is quite standard. And let us look at post combustion method. The post combustion methods for removal of sulphur can be divided into two categories namely the dry method and other is the wet method. In the dry method, the metal oxides namely aluminum oxide, sodium oxide, cobalt oxide extra are used to absorb the CO2 gas forming stable sulphide and sulphate uh, which uh, can be removed easily by the wet or dry scrubbing. And uh, let us look at now the force oxidation lime uh, stone wet scrubbers and this is basically a post combustion method for removing the SOx. In this uh, the slurry compounds such as calcium, magnesium, sodium extra are used to remove the SOx. Uh, let us look at a typical uh, setup for the force oxidation limestone wet scrubbers and uh, of course, this is this would not be that so simple, but in this case the flue gas from the air it has passed through ESP that is electrostatic precipitates, then it will be passed through a boosted fan such that the pressure will increase and it will go pass through the absorber tower in which of course, the limestone finely powder limestone with the water and uh, also the uh, slurries compounds are being fed into here which is not sown uh, and uh, there might be some oxidative the, uh, there might be some supply of air for oxidation where reaction will be going on and this will be basically uh, some of these things will be going and then what you can pass through certain waters and then sprinkle on it is such that uh, this will be uh, mixed with that and then some reaction will be going on and, uh, and then it will be coming down and then you will separate it out. And uh, if you look at the two uh, moles of calcium carbonate will be reacting two moles of SO2 plus uh, in the presence of oxygen going to the calcium sulphide and calcium sulphate and 2 moles of carbon dioxide. Keep in mind that this I have given uh, one equation, but there will be several equations which will be occurring and this is just a representative of overall reaction what is be, will be going on. And then uh, only uh, once the sulphur uh, being removed in terms of uh, in form of calcium uh, sulphide and calcium sulphate this gas will be cleaned out of sulfur SOx and then flue gas will be passing into the atmosphere. 
So, uh, this is the method which is already implemented in the power plants and uh, with this we will be stop over here and then uh, we will discuss about uh, basically uh, the NOx method in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.